What I'd like to do is kind of dive into that right now. So we've got the $22 million number that if I just took 490 grand, let it grow at 10% according to the S&P rate of return, uh, and just, you know, let it grow all the way to age 65, I'll have 22 million roughly. Even factoring in crashes, you know, whatever it is, taxes and, you know, mm -hmm. internal rate of return versus average, not getting into all that. Let's just say it got to 22 million. Now with um, this policy, I, at the moment, I've got uh, 79,000 in loans and I've got 201,000 in total cash value. So 201 minus 79, that's how much liquid available cash value I can borrow from to, to use to my advantage. Um, so what I want to share with you is just looking at the principal dollars that go into the policy, that 490K uh, by age 65 uh, will be roughly 4.2 in death benefit. And then let me just look at the cash value real quick. The cash value says it'll be around 2.2 in cash value at age 65. Now, what I do, what I do personally of the principal dollars that'll grow um, from year to year as the money is growing, I borrow 66% of the available cash value. And then I'm going to put it to work and deploy it into your world of investing, right? Um, real estate is the only location that I have not penetrated just yet. Um, what I've been doing is actually getting involved in businesses that have to do with real estate. So for example, I partnered with a guy that's a, a general contractor. So as a content creator and a lead generation guy, I bring him business in real estate and then I get a, a referral commission just for that. So kind of in real estate, but not like actually owning the property, collecting rents and doing things like that. But I will, I will get there. So let's just take the 490,000 times it by 66%. That's $323,400. This money over the next seven years gets deployed into a multitude of different investments that I have studied for myself, learned, um, and got really educated and comfortable deploying my money there. So that is definitely stocks. So I have a brokerage account. So we'll just, you know, brokerage account and let's, let's put 10% on it. Um, like if I just bought the S and P, like in my case, I'm buying dividend paying stocks. I'm buying index funds, low cost, zero cost index funds that will, you know, do well, uh, that I believe will do well because of their performance, their historical performance. So let's just say 10%. I have money that goes into crypto. So I'm buying the top cryptocurrencies and then a big portion of my money that goes into crypto uh, by stable coins, uh, USDC specifically, and I'm earning a 12% uh, rate of return on that. Unless something changes, I'm, I'm locked in at the 12%. Um, in addition, I do a strategy on uh, recapturing expenses. So not real estate, but I'll just, you know, abbreviate it. Recapturing expenses. So money that I spend already in my personal economy and my business economy actually will sit in the policy. And this is money that I'm going to spend. So this 490,000, not all of it comes from the discretionary income actually a good portion of it comes from expenses and that number from my notes is roughly 26,000 a year so times that by seven it's 182,000 dollars of bills and expenses money that's leaving my economy to pay for my personal life but majority of it is business expenses that actually you know by investing, by reinvesting in myself, which is my business, produces more profit. So I'm able to get a higher rate of return. Um, and so what ends up happening is when I borrow from the policy uh, and I have that cash value loan, uh, that money goes back into my business account or my personal, and I'll use a credit card where I'm getting three to 5% in cash back rewards in addition to statement credits. So that's a couple of hundred and in reality, it's roughly three to five K 
a year in cashback rewards that I get and then a mixture of points. In addition, the bills, this 182,000, the bills are changed from monthly to annual. So I save money by converting the bill instead of paying it on a monthly basis, I pay it on an annual and my average savings is roughly 12%, right? Just by doing that. And some bills are like a 20% savings or you save an entire month or two months, whatever it may be. So that's subscriptions. That's Is that because they give you a discount if you pay it all up front or something like that? Correct. Kind of like car insurance, right. right? Any type of bill, any type of bill that I can switch from monthly to annual and run it through a credit card, I'll get the 12% on the bill itself savings. So, so I'm no longer actually coming out of pocket a total of 182. Um, and then the three to 5% in the cashback rewards itself, right? So this is money that I'm going to spend no matter what. Uh, and then, so we got the stocks, the crypto, recapturing of expenses. And then I also do a little bit of lending. I also have an HSA account. So with my lending, I'm getting a 10% rate of return. I, I lend, I, I lent money to a, a black owned business and, um, the, the initial agreement was I was going to get a percentage of the, uh, the products that they sold. Uh, but they've been going through some tough financial situations. So we actually just renegotiated the agreement to just a flat 10% payback. And I, you know, so I gave them 10 grand, I'm gonna get a thousand bucks back 10%, nothing crazy. Um, and that, you know, helps them grow and totally flexible with how they pay me back. I, you know, they could take as, as, as long as they want uh, to pay me back, but the, the interest is flat. So it's not compounding year to year. It's just flat payback a thousand, 10% of 10 K. So I did it like that just to, you know, help them out. And then I'm able to get a, a return that offsets my borrowing costs, which my borrowing cost is a 5.66% loan. In the insurance policy itself, my crediting rate is a little bit above, it's actually 6%, is what I'm getting credited on whatever money I borrow from the policy itself. So it creates this wash effect where in reality, maybe my cost is like one or 2% in the beginning years. And then once the policy produces a positive IRR, which will happen in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh year, then I no longer have cost of borrowing, which can get really interesting. And then finally my HSA, uh, which in there I went low did 6%, but I know I, I know I've been doing better in the account. Um, and this account specifically in the beginning is purchasing silver and gold. And once it gets to a certain point, uh, then I'll most likely, with the person that I'm learning from that I that's working with me, convert that uh, and buy real estate, like what you do, but within the HSA. Uh, and that'll be like my medical retirement plan when I get old and you know my back blows out and you gotta do all these other stuff <laughs> from standing doing YouTube for 45 years. Cause that's how I do my content, always standing up and kind of integrating. But God forbid anything happens to me, uh, that HSA is also tax-free use in regards to medical. So I'm pretty sure you're aware of that aware of that uh, unique tool. So all these different things are yielding these, I would say very competitive, uh, attractive rates of returns. And when I was running the numbers for myself uh, on a lot of like specifically like just the crypto with the stable coins, roughly 15 grand a year, I buy USDC. So I've been doing that for 2020 and 2021. So only two years so far. And if I do that for about seven, uh, no, I'm sorry. If I do it for about, I think 20 years, 20, 25 years, I think that alone would have created about like 2 million plus. Um, and then of which I could, you know, sell it, um, uh, for cash flow or convert it, buy other cryptos, have the, you know, rates go tremendously higher in that case. So when we start factoring in the second component of the policy, I think there can be some uh, additional benefits here where if I can reduce my opportunity costs as low as the insurance company will allow. So just so you know, the, the lowest that you can go is literally 10% uh, 
of whatever you're putting in principal dollars. Some insurance companies will let you go as high as 95% to 5% in premium, some insurance companies, um, but that's typically the smaller ones. So I tend to stay with the bigger mutual dividend paying life insurance companies because they have typically better returns. Um, and then policy design where we're designing it for minimum commission, maximum cash value upfront in the beginning years. So then I can borrow from the policy and deploy it into things that I know or are very educated in that will, that will do well. Uh, and the last, the last component of all of this is this word right here, a co-vestment. So this has to do with, uh, me being involved with, uh, an FBO, a faith-based organization. So this is part of my faith in, in kingdom living, uh, being a part of an organization, like an association, AKA a church where I put my dollars into a church format and then the church through their tax accepted status, they're able to acquire the things that you and I acquire as individuals or as corporations. They acquire it as an association, an, un an unincorporated corporation or unincorporated association, tax accepted. They don't have to pay tax and they go and syndicate wealth same way we do it, but without any of the taxes involved and they have more flexibility. Uh, and then that money comes back in the form of cash flow to the members, the participating, the bona fide participating members of that co-vestment, right? So that's like the last thing that I do. And, and that right there is like my, it's going to be my bread and butter as I get older and older because of the, uh, the exceptions, the accepted status that th this particular faith-based organization has. So with that being said, I know I just went uh, real deep in the meat and potatoes again. Um, but now that you get to see the full picture of what I'm doing, any questions, any thoughts, uh, in terms of bridging that $22 million gap, can you potentially see how I can start getting close to you? I'm not saying I'll beat you without a doubt, because I still had the cost here for the first four to seven years. I'm not saying I'll beat you, but I am saying, I think I can not, not be so far off from you. And then the, also the, the tax-free component here of what I'm uh, dealing with, which I'm sure you're also getting as well because you've got the, the right access to the, the, the tools necessary to leverage the tax code to your, to your advantage.